In this video I want to talk about why I'm getting into wildlife photography and what it will mean for this YouTube channel and also I'm gonna walk you through my process uh, for purchasing a new lens. How do I identify what lenses are interesting, uh, how do I find the best lens for the money and what websites and tools do I use for that and finally how do I find the best price for that lens. And this will be a pretty long video with mostly me just talking so feel free to uh, do something else while listening to this video because there will not be a huge amount of visual information. Before we dive into the video I just want to say that it's been over a month since I did a proper photo walk with a proper photo walk video and that is so frustrating and as you might know there are several reasons for this i had my eye inflammation my kids have been sick a lot and now during the last few days i have been sick <laughs> so <laughs> i haven't been I gotten out at all and it's so frustrating so i really hope that this is the last indoors video that i do in a while because i really prefer being outdoors with my camera shooting interesting things so while i I've always had the deepest form of love for macro photography. I've always enjoyed trying all kinds of different genres of photography. And on this channel you have seen me do a lot of family portraits and review of prime lenses for that. You have seen me do some landscape and um, even some astrophotography. Uh, but I have not done that much wildlife, almost nothing I think. Or yeah, pretty much nothing if you don't count insects as wildlife. Uh, but actually I've been doing a little bit of wildlife photography, uh, first of all early in my photography career before I discovered macro photography, I actually uh, bought uh, some Canon uh, long telephoto lenses like the Canon 300mm f4, the Canon 400mm f5.6, the Canon 100-400mm. Uh, the reason why I bought Canon lenses despite having a Sony camera was that there were no long telephoto lenses for Sony, at least none that I could afford. So I had to buy the ones for Canon and try to adapt them to my Sony camera with a meter bones adapter and in most cases that did not work well. In most cases the autofocus was very 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 bad uh, and in some cases I had to use, use manual focus basically. Uh, so that was a bit discouraging, but even though I had such bad gear, I actually found it very fun, but it was just too hard to continue when the lens won't focus 9 times out of 10. It was just like, like a bit too frustrating. And also since the day I discovered my love for photography, I've been having two children and they have been born and gone through this stage where you kind of need to be home a lot because they need a lot of care and I don't want to put everything on my wife. Uh, so it's been hard for me to take long excursions to do photography. And in wildlife photography you typically need to go out for a whole day uh, to get anywhere interesting and to shoot some interesting animals. Even though I love doing like urban wildlife as well and that is something I would probably look into. Um, anyway, those are the reasons I haven't really done a lot of wildlife photography, but I've always had this curiosity and this urge to, to try it again when the circumstances are right. And now the circumstances are pretty good. Uh, nowadays both my kids are in preschool and when they're not sick I can actually go out for a whole day to do photography. And lenses! Wildlife lenses like 600mm lenses have actually become affordable and available for Sony cameras and actually you don't have to spend like $10,000 to get a decent lens anymore and that is amazing. Uh, so that is why I actually just ordered the Sony 200-600mm uh, telephoto lens which seems like an awesome lens for the money, like really really good and I'm so stoked to get it in a few days and to start trying it out, trying to shoot some birds, some uh, wildlife, maybe some hares, maybe some deer, maybe I will even see an elk, who knows. Uh, but I plan on doing a bit of this photography and I plan on doing videos around it and I think 
that process will be probably similar to when I started with macro photography on this channel. I was a complete beginner in macro photography, or at least almost complete beginner when I started this channel. And you have been able to follow me on this channel while I have gone from a complete beginner in macro photography to pretty good. I'm not saying I'm the best, but I'm at least better than average, I think. And I hope that I will be able to do the same journey with wildlife. I will start playing around and do videos about what I learn and I will see how it goes from there. Maybe I'll be completely bored in a couple of tries or maybe I will love it just as much as I love macro photography. I have a hunch I might actually like it a lot, we'll see. And furthermore, reason for me to get into wildlife photography are two more things. Uh, first of all, I did a survey actually among uh, you people, at least the followers on Instagram and asked like what genres are you interested in besides macro photography and the winner, a clear winner was wildlife and bird photography and when I announced on Instagram that I want to try this I got many positive comments and many hearts on that uh, Instagram story so it seems like there is a lot of interest out there and please comment below what you think about this are you also interested in wildlife and what would you say if um, some of my videos at least in the winter will be wildlife videos maybe I will do still like 60-70% macro photography videos but then maybe 30% of the videos will be wildlife if, if I find it as exciting as I hope I will. Uh, what do you think about that? Is it okay with you or will you like this channel less? Will you unsubscribe or what's your feelings? Please uh, let me know. <laughs> and the other reason I'm doing it now is because I tend to get in a slump this time of year. Macro season has ended, there are no insects outside anymore here in Sweden. Uh, I have only boring subjects when I go out to do macro photography and it can sometimes be challenging uh, to do macro photography in the winter when you live in a non-tropical country like I do. And usually I pick up some other hobby instead. Maybe last year it was NFTs. Uh, that has kind of gone into a very slow bear market right now. Uh, so I'm not doing uh, much NFT trading right now. Um, the year before that I got into FPV drones. So I know that I'm probably gonna have to find some new kind of hobby to supplement the lack of interesting macro photography. But I want to find a hobby that uh, is photography related so I can do videos about it because I need to make the videos to make a living uh, as well. So the optimal thing for me is a hobby that I enjoy a lot and that you enjoy a lot and that I can also, also earn some money from by doing uh, YouTube videos about it. So that is my hope with this little uh, wildlife uh, thing. So why am I buying the Sony 200 to 600 specifically and how do I decide on buying a lens? Like what are the steps I go through? I think it always begins with an inspiration. I see a photograph that I find really beautiful and I think to myself I would like to take a photo like that. And then usually I do some research on what lenses are this person using to take these photos. And in the wildlife case I think actually one of the main inspirations lately for me has been another fellow Swede and YouTuber Olle Nilsson. You should definitely check out his uh, YouTube channel and also check out his Instagram. He's quite big on there. And he takes such amazing beautiful wildlife photos in the Swedish nature um, using the Sony 200 to 600. That is a um, big part of what got me interested in that lens. Uh, because I like to see it like that. If I find a photo uh, like the ones taken by Ole Nilsson that I really love and find really beautiful and I live in the same kind of environment as that guy and also I'm getting the same lens as that guy, then the only thing standing in the way uh, between me and taking such beautiful photos is my own talent and skill. And of course that can be a unsurmountable huge mountain to climb but it's a nice feeling to know that I have the right equipment that I have equipment that it is possible to do that work with so I, I know that I'm not capped by what kind of equipment I use and actually I applied exactly the same reasoning for example when I got my Lava 60mm lens I found that some of my favorite macro photographers that I really admire and that I love the work of, they are using that lens. So I know that if I buy it, 
then at least the equipment will not be what's holding me back from taking such beautiful photos. And I love that feeling. But I really love researching products and I really love being sure of my decision when I buy something. So what I usually do next when after getting the, the inspiration is I go on all the photo sharing sites that have good search functions. I go on Instagram. I search tags with that lens, Sony 200-600. I go on Flickr, I search that lens. I try to filter for photos taken with that lens. I go on 500px, I search that lens. I try to find photos taken with it. I And the reason I do this is I want to get a view of what kind of photos you can take with the lens in question. And what I also very often discover is that the people who are using the particular lens I'm interested in are also using other similar lenses. So I usually get a good overview of what alternatives there are. For example, when I researched now the 200 to 600 by Sony, I saw that also Sony has the 100 to 400, which is slightly more expensive, but also very usable and has some distinct advantages compared to the 200 to 600. So that way I get more of a feel of what you can do with the lens and also what kind of alternatives there are. And then I always go on YouTube and I always watch at least five, six review videos of the lens in question. Uh, because then I usually get to see very competent people who are experts in their field talk about using that lens. And that always gives me some interesting insights. For example, it was during that phase now that I discovered that the Sony 100 to 400 can be a really interesting alternative because it can focus a lot closer than the 200 to 600. Uh, but at the same time, it doesn't have the same reach, obviously, as the 200 to 600. Um, then I get a more nuanced view of the lens in question and I get to see what all the alternatives are. I also go to a big retailer within uh, photography and lenses and also check there using their filtering function. Uh, DP Review has a good guide on cameras at least, I'm not sure about lenses. I always go to a Swedish website called Cyberfoto, uh, which are selling most lenses that are available on the market. So if I filter by Sony lenses, uh, super telezooms, I can be pretty sure to get like most of the ones available out there. And then I can see as well that, oh, there are a couple of offerings by Tamron and Sigma that I should also look into because they are a bit uh, cheaper. And then in the end, I watch a few reviews of these as well. I go check their uh, photos on Instagram and on Flickr and 500px and try to get a picture of um, how they differ in look and performance and so on. In the end, I found that these alternatives by Tamron and Sigma had a couple of shortcomings. They don't tend to be as reliable when it comes to the focusing and the user experience. And one thing I really love about the Sony 200 to 600 is that it is internal focusing. So it doesn't extend and become more front heavy as you zoom in and stuff like that. And that is important to me. Um, so then I found myself more and more comfortable in the decision to buy the Sony 200 to 600. Another great website that I can recommend when it comes to purchasing lenses and cameras and stuff like that is Photo Rumors. I visit them daily or actually I have like a feed that comes into my email from their website daily because they cover pretty much every new camera and lens release and I've been following them for years so I have a very good picture of what is available out there. So the day I want to purchase a certain camera or lens I know the alternatives already because I've been following the photo rumors newsletter. Okay so the final step when I've decided on a lens that I feel is the best um, worth for my money, uh, the Sony 200-600, it's around $2,000. So it's not a cheap lens, it will be the most expensive lens I have ever purchased probably. Then we come to the financing and finding the best price part. And when I buy a new lens, it's not like I have an infinite amount of money, it's not like I take money from my pocket because as you might know I'm actually losing money every month doing this YouTube channel so it's not an alternative for me to kind of take it out of my own pocket. What I pretty much always do is I sell some gear that I already own that I haven't used in a long time. And today I'm gonna pack my um, Canon RP camera and my uh, Canon 800mm f11 lens 
And I haven't used this setup in over a year. I just used it like once or twice, taking uh, some shots of hairs I found <laughs> close to where I live. But I haven't found myself using this a lot. And it's mostly due to the fact that it just wasn't the right setup for me. It's very good value for money wildlife setup. The camera is like a thousand dollars or even less maybe. And the lens is also less than a thousand dollars and it's incredibly lightweight. Uh, but the lens is just too inflexible. I need some zoom range and the f11 max aperture requires a lot of light. So it's not as flexible when the light is uh, a bit darker as it very often is here in the winter in Sweden. Uh, so I'm going to sell this on MPB, which is a great site to just sell your stuff easily. No questions asked, no problems with buyers that take up your time and energy. You just send your stuff and you get paid. I can really recommend that site, even though they are not a sponsor yet. And that will cover most of the purchase. And then I will uh, sell a couple of more uh, lenses back here as well that I haven't been using in over a year. And that is how I will finance it. And where do I buy my lens? This will of course be very different for you if you live in a different country than me. Uh, there are different choices available in uh, different countries and especially if you live like in the US or Asia, there will be uh, very different options. But for me, I usually go to a Swedish price comparison website called Prisjakt. I just enter the product there to just get an overview of what I can buy it for here in the country from a trusted reseller. And usually that is not the best price. Uh, I quite often buy from there anyway, but I always check uh, gray market import sites like eInfin.com. Sometimes you can find a real bargain there, like the lens a lot cheaper than you would find uh, in uh, Sweden, but it would have to be a lot cheaper because I will have more trouble if I want to uh, claim uh, something on a warranty or if it breaks or something. Uh, yeah, these gray market import sites, they can be cheaper, but it has to be a lot cheaper for me to use them. But I quite often use them anyway. And then you also have the option to buy it used, of course. I always go to the My Locus classified websites, check what, uh, what kind of price I can buy it for used. But very often when it comes to these high-end telephoto lenses, for, so for whatever reason, people think they can get like... 80% of the original price when I sell it used. And for me, it's not worth it really. Maybe if I can get it for like 60, 70% of the full uh, retail price, and maybe I can consider buying it used and I quite often do. Uh, in this case, there is like a temporary drive, like a temporary campaign on this lens in Sweden. So I can actually get it for a lot less than it has cost before. So I'm gonna take advantage of that. And actually I just ordered it before recording this video. So it should be on its way to me now. So I have to hurry up and sell my <laughs> other gear to finance it. All right, uh, this video was a lot of talking by me, but uh, I hope some of you maybe found it uh, useful. <laughs> And let me know what tips and tricks you have for buying lenses. And let me know what you think about my new wildlife experiment that I will do now during the autumn. See you soon again in another video. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. Did you know that the future of this YouTube channel relies heavily on support by viewers like you? For $5 per month, you can support this YouTube channel and in return, you will get access to my library of 15 bonus videos. I make a new Patreon exclusive bonus video every month. The latest one, for example, is where I edit raw files from my Patreon supporters. I also do photo critiques. I do uh, exclusive macro photography adventures that nobody except my Patreon supporters get to see. So please consider supporting me on Patreon. It is very much needed and very much appreciated.